In case you're wondering where we are, this place is called Ankegoda Book House. I got to know through an article a few years ago about this book house and about Mr. Ankegoda, a book lover who collected thousands of books. That's when I first met him and I have come to meet him again. When I was here a few years ago, the number of books I could see with every turn of the eye amazed me. But the sad part was, they looked helpless. Even though a tiny portion of these books are now moved into a new space, the remaining are still struggling as much as a bookkeeper. If you visit the place, it will be Mr. Ankegoda who receives you. It will be him who would find the book you need or take you on a tour of the place. This whole place is being looked after by him alone, with the minimum resources he has to maintain a huge place like this. So, thousand almera required. How often do people visit you? I asked him. Two or three hundred people from the area side. Okay. On average, it used to be somewhere between 100 and 200 people per day. But that was before the pandemic. During the two and a half hours I was with him, there were hardly a couple of people who visited the library. There are many books with beautiful covers, some of them so shy that they turn their faces to the wall. There are also many more tucked away in boxes. And as if there aren't enough books right in front, the mirror is trying its best to show me more of them lying behind. If these are all people instead of books, they have countless stories to share. They have friends and family. Some of them are still young. Some have aged pretty bad and are already dying, their white skin slowly turning into different shades of black. When an IAS aspirant came to meet him, he was effortlessly finding the books she needed and was also suggesting better ones. In the ocean of books, he knows where to find the one he needs. Mr. Rankagoda loves collecting and for years he has collected more than just books. You may not know what some of these things are if you are too young. And you might feel you have aged a lot if you have any memories of using some of these. I really enjoyed dialing these classic old telephones and tapping the keys of the old typewriters. If you happen to stay for a while, you will surely meet Mr. Ankegoda's wife, who would sweetly invite you for lunch or a cup of tea depending on the time of the day. And then she would disappear into some corner, continuing her work. That's me taking a tour of this place with sips of hot milk. Thanks for the hospitality. There are a few ways you can support Uncle Gauda and his books. The first and the best way would be to visit him if you can. This place is located less than a kilometer from Pandavapura railway station which is around 2 hours from Bangalore by train. As you can see, it takes more than minimum resources to maintain a place like this. 
You can also donate whatever you can to help Mr. Ankagoda. Here are his contact details, which I have added in video description as well. Another way to help him is to simply call him, tell him what you think about his book collection and have a conversation. I'm sure he would love that. When I asked if he still collects books, he laughed and said, no, as if he meant, I got into enough trouble already. What about the locals? Do they come to the library? I asked him. Not much. They aren't interested in books and reading, he answered. That reminds me of this quote. You don't have to burn books to destroy a culture. Just get people to stop reading them. <laughs> so many books. <laughs>